Hello and welcome to airgunweb.com, your home for honest, real-world airgun reviews and information where we bring you the facts, not fluff. Today we finally look at a simple teardown and rebuild of the Benjamin Trail NP. This is a very popular rifle that has great potential. To keep it running in top condition, it's important to know what makes it tick. And that's our project for today. Before we get started, I want to thank Pyramid Air for sponsoring this series and our channel. You can get the links to the items used on this episode at www.airgunweb.com. Just look for the Take Aim section of the site. So let's get started. You're going to need a few tools. Now I may miss a few and if I do we'll get to them eventually in the video. You're going to need a good set of metal punches, a wrench, screwdrivers of various sizes, pliers of various sizes. Uh, I think it's great to have a vise. I use that quite a bit. A file. Um, I have a battery operated Dremel tool which is also really handy. You're going to need some paper towels and rags. Various lubricants say like the MP5 oil and absolutely most importantly the Air Venturi Molly paste. Lastly and most important you're going to need a spring compressor. This is a commercial spring compressor that used to be made by B-Square. They don't make it anymore and uh, that's okay I didn't particularly really care for it because it was kind of awkward to use. Now in the absence of something like that what I've done is I've actually made my own design and we're going to talk about that probably in another video. First thing we need to do and this is going to depend on your spring compressor uh, you may have to swap steps one and two. The way I built my spring compressor is how we're going to look at it today. The first thing you need to do is secure your gun in your spring compressor. Now when I was thinking about how to build a spring compressor I thought what is the one thing that really bugs me about the B-square? And that was that it was very uh, cumbersome. The gun wanted to move around so when I thought about what I wanted in a spring compressor I thought of first I don't want the gun to go anywhere. Then I got to thinking about what is going to be perhaps the best location maybe the most, most rugged location to connect the gun and I thought of well the scope mounts pretty rigid so why not build a compressor that can actually hold the gun the action of the gun completely steady and up where you can see it give you access with both hands so you don't have to fumble around with that big bulky compressor. Okay now that we have our rifle secured to our spring compressor we're going to move on to step two which is to remove the stock. On this gun Go ahead and take the rifle sling off. That's definitely unique to the trail. You're going to have basically three screws you have to remove. Okay, now we have the stock off the gun. We're going to move on to step three. Now, to get the action out of the gun you have to remove the trigger block. So we're going to do that part next. To remove the trigger block you're going to obviously set your parts aside and get a wrench. Now you can use a open end box wrench or I just use an adjustable here. And this is the screw that holds the trigger in place. It also is what your stock screws into. And it also holds this block in back here. Oh, let's see how they did this one. Aha, uh -huh, awesome. We're going to need to take this little end cap off. So let's go ahead and do that now while we can. All right, now before you can just yank this right off, you've got to disconnect this linkage right here. Now this linkage is what prevents you from um, pulling the trigger when the barrel is not fully in the upright position. All right, so we're going to need a little screwdriver to remove this clip. All right, so now you'll see that this comes apart off the trigger block, not very easily. But before we can take it all the way off, we're going to take this spring out. Now that's where our needle nose pliers will come in handy. Okay. 
So with that disconnected, you can now get this linkage off. Now that trigger block is loose. Before we can take it all the way out, we're going to have to compress this in, drive this pin out, and then this whole assembly will come out. And this is where your spring compressor comes into play. Now, with the B-square, or maybe other compressors, what you have to do in this circumstance is you've actually got to be manipulating the whole frame of that spring compressor while you're trying to screw that in and unscrew it. It's a real pain. So now we've added a little tension. You can see that that pin, which was being held in by the gas ram, will now push right out. So now, see all of this comes right out. Pretty slick, eh? Alright, so that's out of the way now. Now, we could pull out our gas ram. This is, you know, I don't know what this part is called technically. We'll call it the rear retention block, okay? So we've removed the rear retention block, we've removed the ram. Set that aside. Now we got to get the piston out. This part can get a little tricky, but what you essentially need to do, you've got to get this cocking arm up out of the way, and we're going to carefully pull that get, uh, the piston out of the gun. Now, there's some sharp edges in here, so you need to be sort of careful. Don't go too fast. So we're going to go ahead and pull this out. And that is our piston, and this is our seal. Now we're going to do a full inspection of all these parts. One of the things I'm noticing is this is very dry and it's very, very dirty. So obviously the next thing we're going to do is clean the internal parts of this gun, clean all of these parts. Um, now there's lots of different ways you can do it. Uh, people use brake cleaner. Um, any, the big thing you need to do is whatever you do in here needs to be completely dry before you put it back together. I have a cleaning rod and I put a piece of paper towel on it and I thread that right in the chamber. That allows me to get get in there and get a lot of that gunk out. Okay. Now, while that's airing out, we'll switch over and clean all the components. Now, there's really nothing you need to do with your gas ram. Um, we'll just wipe it down good. Some of these other parts may need a little attention. Now, this is our piston. The important part of this is not, you know, say the inside of this chamber. The important part is going to be this piston seal. And ours has got a little wear on it, frankly, and I don't have a spare, so we're going to have to just rebuild it with this one. Now, the one thing we're going to do, um, and it's optional, but we're going to look at it today, is the Crossman trigger. Okay, so I'm going to try and show you this on camera, what's actually happening with this trigger when you use it. When you pull the trigger, you've got a sear and you've got a strut. When you pull the trigger, it moves the strut and then that, when it reaches a certain point, it allows the sear to move up and then the piston goes forward. What happens is the edge that that sear runs, or that strut runs on, on the sear, can get, it, it comes to the factory extremely rough, right there, right there on the edge. So what I'm going to do, I'm going to take my Dremel tool and I'm just going to very gently and easily smooth out that edge. Now, I'm going to take the Dremel tool with a polishing stone. It's not a rough cut um, stone that's meant for taking a lot of metal off. It's just a polishing stone. That's it. That's all you need to do. 
All right, switch over to my wire brush and just hit that with the wire brush. Okay, just that little bit. It's amazing what that, just that little polish on that one little part will do for your trigger. All right, so now we're ready to go ahead and reassemble the gun. Now, we're going to use the molly paste on our piston here. Now, this piston, it does need a lot. And frankly, the only parts that really run on the chamber are right up here. The rest of it sort of slops around in there. Not real tight tolerances there. But this piston here and this front part of the, I mean, excuse me, the seal in the front part of this piston do rub in this chamber. So we want to put a light coat of this molly paste. Now this stuff is, um, it's slippery. I mean, it's really slippery. The other thing is it is a little toxic. So now that I get it all over my fingers, I used to try and use latex gloves, but it just goes right through them. So, you know, at some point you just Put it on, and you go wash your hands quickly. That's what I do. All right, I'm going to set this down. Actually, I'm going to set this in the gun. Let's do that. Okay, remember, you're going slow here. All right. Now, I am going to get this stuff off my hands. Now, when you go to reinsert the piston, you want to be cautious of these sharp edges here on the top of your compression chamber. You can use like this flathead screwdriver and you can help navigate the seal through these channels because what you don't want to have happen is the seal catch and you take a chunk out of it and then you got to start all over. You don't want to do that. Ask me how I know that happens. Okay. So, we'll go ahead and sort of push it in All right now next hurdle will be up the top here now we can start putting back in the other components again there's really nothing you need to do as far as oiling this ram it's a sealed system yeah, we can put this back together. Uh, one thing I forgot to mention, and it's really important, there's a little plastic guide right here, and this one's on there pretty good, but I've had these come off, and if they come off, uh, you'll really tear your gun up because that metal will rub here. You won't know what's going on, but you'll just tear it up. So make sure you keep an eye on this little plastic guide. Okay. So now... Oh, we're just about ready to get this all back together. This trigger going back in uh, can be a little bit of a challenge. And it is because you've got to get this to sit right there while you slide it in. So I use a little screwdriver. Where is it? Ah, there we go. Now we can reconnect our linkage. in those little clips can fly so be careful when you're putting those back together all right let's put our gas ram retention block that's my personal name for this little device back into place and this is where our spring compressor is going to come into play again don't need to turn it much or push it much. There we are. Just like that. Now while we've got that tension on there, I'm going to go ahead and replace this nut, screw, whatever it is. This holds our trigger block in place. 
Go ahead and return that piece. Finish tightening this up. All right, while I've got this open, I'm gonna put just a touch molly on this little, on this spot right here, where that is gonna ride. Now the next thing is just put our stock back on. Okay. Now the gun is pretty much rebuilt. That's all there is to it. So now our gun's all back together, and I'd like to get some crony numbers. But before I can do that, I need to shoot it a little bit to make sure I've worked out all of that excess lubricant. So I'm going to go do that, and when I come back, we should have some good before and after numbers that we can talk about. Before our teardown and rebuild, this rifle was averaging between 690 and, say, 710 feet per second. That's about a 20 foot per second spread, and that's using the H&N field target trophies, which are 14.66 grain. After our teardown and rebuild, our average is now 720 feet per second. We've got only a 6 foot per second spread and a standard deviation of only 2 feet per second. The contrast between what was already a pretty smooth shooting gun and what is now a really smooth shooting gun is, is very noticeable. By polishing just that tiny little bit of the sear, it made a huge difference with how the trigger feels. Even though the second stage is still very long, we didn't do anything to the safety factor, we just made it smoother. And that's a much more enjoyable shooting experience. Well, this wraps up another episode of Take Aim. I'd like to thank Pyramid Air for letting us do this video and for their continued support of this series and our channel. Please be sure to visit my website, www.airgunweb.com, for a list of all the items we used in this video, along with their related links. Until next time, this is Rick Utzler with airgunweb.com. Thanks for watching.